Hello, good morning. So along with the last lecture, today I'm going to introduce this paper, same issue, same year, 2012 Science, written by Verona Rublachet. The title is The Nucleus Major Shape Change for Cellular Proprioception to Control Dynamic Cell Behavior. Here, they use special cell, embryonic progenitor cell. And then they want to know how this progenitor cell, they migrate during embryogenesis. So this is their schematic summary. As an input, when cells are confined by the surrounding cells, and then especially their nucleus are stretched during the migration, from the cell, or the, from the ECM, original cell membrane and nucleus for this structure, they position like this. But when the inner nuclear membrane is unfolded during the migration and confined force, this folded nuclear membrane, they are stretched left and right while they pass through the small pore and then CPRA, they are positioned to the inner nuclear membrane. Meanwhile, as we know, the CPRA2, they make arachnoid exit from the phospholipid membrane. And then at the time also this nucleus can act as a sensor, sensor of mechanical force. So this kind of elasticity symbol you can see. So when after sensation of the force, this sensation can make transduction. How? When you look at this, this original myosin 2 and actin are here. When nucleus as nuclear sense the power force this myosin 2 are activated so you can see red dot here but the total actin amount is maintained while they are while the cell and nucleus are confined this myosin 2 activation can occur because of this arachnoid exit function they are activating cortical myosin 2 activation. So because of nuclear sensing and transduction to the cortical myosin 2 activation, the cell, they are deformed highly and nucleus is unfolded and then contractly they can occur. So migration speed enhance so they are migrating, even in embryogenesis. So here, how they design their experiment. They confine the cell. They use the embryonic progenitor cell. And then unconfined. Confined me, they literally compress the cell. Low. Not much, just little confined the cell membrane. Strong confinement, this confinement can affect the nucleus height that can decrease it. So suspension, so myosin 2 level, here they use myosin 12, myosin L 12.1 EGFP after transfection. Suspension as normal, like this kind of low intensity, over increase of confinement and then confinement height, the you can see the increase of myosin 12 level, especially at 7, they are very highly unregulated. Suspension, 13, 10, 7 micrometer, while cells are compressed by this confinement machine, the, the expression of the myosin level is enhanced. So on confinement, similarly around 1 and 2 level, while they're confined, 7, 
depending on the how cell are compressed, the myosin activation is enhanced. How long they, do they sustain? While confinement 7 micrometer, 1.5, 7 minute, the myosin 2 activation is maintained. So this is not only for one second, they are sustained. And then while they are confined up to 7 micrometer, what happened to the cell? The stable blood cell, this is a stable blood cell. The morphology is the nucleus is localized spatially in edge, and then they are having amoeboid migration morphology. So suspension like this, 13, 10, and 7 micrometer, you can see increase of this amoeboid migrating cell. But after treating the blevistatin, myosin 2 deactivator, inhibitor, all this kind of amoeboid poly polarized motile behavior cell disappeared. So here, you can see from the images, non-polarized unmotile cell, they are round shape and nucleus in central position. While they are compressed, 2 and 4 minutes, this nucleus is edge localized, and then this polarized motile behave you can see. While they are doing that, you can see the increase of myosin 2, myosin L, myosin L 12.1 activation, and then this activation they did only 15 minutes. And then when they release, this machine activation, they're gone to zero to five minutes right after release the confinement. And then this is release of confinement and then decrease of machine activation sustained over 60 meter, 60 minute, which means that this confined induced myosin 2 activation is solely depending on the confinement. What is the confinement at least? They are going back to normal. So we can say that this confined induced cell migration, amoeboid, motile, and polarized structure, which is already known, but here they want to correlate this motile motility can be enhanced by this machine 2 activation. And then, as I told you, here they use the embryonic stem cell. So while they are making embryonic stem cell, this is the, their embryogenesis stage. Sphere stage, shield, 75% epiboli. HPF means hours post-fertilization. Fertilization is when sperm and egg meet. They are for making fertilization. This is four hours later of fertilization, six hours later, eight hours later. Four hours later, also you can gather embryonic progenitor cell from this blastula structure. And then after six hours, you can see ecto -meso endodome structure. So they separately get the cell from these three different lineage and then also check. This is this kind of confined induced cell migration enhanced is overall situation. Here, when you look at the in vivo structure, mesenchyme cell, here you can see the green and pink are there. Pink is uh, sorry, lean tomato is a pink, and then GFP is another cell marker. So you can see this uh, actin activation, myosin 2 activation is also detected in in vivo. And in vitro 2D, mesenchyma cell, they need the fibronectin coating. So after fibronectin coating on the slide glass, 2D, they are shown like that. After confined by their special machine, they can detect some amoeboid migration structure. And then, as I told you, previously they are using embryonic stem cell from this blastula. And then, while embryogenesis is ongoing, 
they can see ecto, mezzo, endo. So here, they collect the mezzo, endo, ecto, and then check how they are confined, and then what is the activation of myosin. Also, mesoderm after binding, attaching on the substrate, ectoderm as well, they can enhance the myosin to level. So which means whether they are suspended cell or adenal cell, they are from the embryonic stem cell, ectoderm, or mesoderm cell. This is confined induced myosin to activation is overall phenomenon. And then from this overall phenomenon, when they are polarized by this confinement, compress, they start to show migration. And then their cell behavior is very typical to migrate this way. So always they migrate to this side, this side, this side. To large their body, they are directed, go there, and then nucleus is positioned in the other side. But non-polarized, without compress, you cannot see any this kind of migration. So physical confinement trigger amoeboid migration in different cell lineages, regardless of suspension cell and adherent cell. And then they come to know, okay, what can be the mechanism? So here they again they check the they already know that myosin to level is activated on the confinement and then Nuclear diameter, they measure this figure. Nuclear diameter, this green color, they are going up through this certain confined height and then continuously going up to 7 micrometer, which means that this, and then as you can see, this myosin 2 activation as your nucleus diameter increase is correlate each other after this certain threshold. So they can, they can imagine, oh, this nuclear diameter is somehow related to the myosin 2 activation. So here they checked the cell top and lateral view, 13 micrometer confined, 7 micrometer confined. As you can see, 7 micrometer confined, they are more enlarged. As a 2D project area, they are more enlarged. And then you can see DNA, and ER and myosin 2, especially the myosin 2, 12.1, as you see this from this uh, paper, the, the meaning of this marker is, I show you, MIL 12.1 EGFP myosin 2. This is another name of the myosin 2. So you can see this MIL 12.1 is same as the myosin 2. Yeah, for your record, I tell you this information. So myosin T, as you see, they are a little more enhanced, look enhanced in this area. And then while these nucleus are compressed, as you as we already know from the previous article, suspension cell we can see many inner nuclear membrane for this structure. But while they are confined over this inner nuclear membrane, they are more stretched. So they are unfolding. This folded can be unfolded under stretch. So here they quantify the parameter nucleus area per perimeter. Increase of area is they are more stretched. And the invagination ratio, invagination, this, this is the invagination. This folded one is the invagination ratio. Invagination ratio is decreasing, which means they are more stretched in the nuclear membrane of the nucleus. So here again, they transfect the left to be non mankano sensitive nuclear membrane protein, and then check detail how nuclear membrane change over confinement. For suspension, you can see many invagination and folding structure of the nuclear membrane over 13, 10, 7 micrometer, this folding is stretched and they are more stretched and unfolded. And here they track the nuclear membrane fluctuation. Under suspension, without confinement, they are more fluctuated, which means they are more dynamically moved, the nuclear membrane. But 7 micrometer confined, they are more stretched 
and then they are under force. So that is why they cannot dynamically change their movement. So this is, this is some experiment to confirm. This is really stretch, under stretch, and then nuclear membrane are under force. So the curvature G is nuclear curvature. Nuclear curvature, this is more curvate, right? Because they are, you can see many folding structure, but they are uncurvated, which is they are more stretched. So this is some how nuclear behave under confinement. So we can know that nuclear envelope unfolding is associated with increasing cortical contractility. Cortical contractility is this machine to activation enhance, and the nuclear diameter they are more stretched. So here they want to decouple. Okay, this kind of machine to activation is from the cell membrane deformation or nuclear deformation while they are compressed. Cell membrane also compressed and then nuclear is compressed. So they want to decouple this one. So here they have very systematic experiment using two different cells. One is more large, large volume cell. They have more cytoplasm 3.3 hour later of the fertilization. And the four hours later, they are more smaller because while the embryogenesis cells are divided over time, and then when, while they are divided, they don't have enough time to make the cytoplasm. So that is why they have shrinked as a plasm at 4 HPF. So here they have two, four, 3.3. There and then they compress 16 micrometer. Their cell deformation from the original suspended cell they change 1.62, but their machine to level doesn't change, which means cell deformation doesn't correlate directly to the machine to activation. But after 30 micrometer confinement, what happened? This 1.62, 2, and 2, 2, 2.6. Okay, in that case also, you can see many cell plasma deformation, cell membrane deformation, but when you look at the nuclear deformation here, 6, 16 micrometer confined, no change that much, while they're 16 micrometer. But 13 micrometer confined, they are enhanced the nuclear deformation. And then, this is the starting point, they change the machine to level. Okay? So they want to know, not because of the cell deformation, one, three, but because of a nuclear deformation change, which can be a key player to induce the myosin 2 activation. And then again, here, when they compress the cell up to 10 micrometer, here, this is 0.2 cell deformation changed to 2.6 deformation. So meanwhile, or the nuclear deformation severely changed. Okay, so this is changed, so myosin 2 is increased, this cell, but when you look at this, this one, green and blue, what happened? Cell deformation doesn't change each other, but they are increase of myosin 2 level. So this is another confirmation, not from the cell deformation, but from the nuclear deformation, this myosin 2 activation, you can see. So this is their images, 4 HPF, 3.3 HPF, compressed, compressed, nuclear, while they are more changed, and then myosin 2 level more enhanced. And then they want to check the nuclear integrity. Nuclear integrity, as you know, interphase means that uh, interphase is other cell cycle. Mitotic is S phase, right before they are doing some cell division. So as you imagine, in mitotic cell cycle, the nuclear integrity, they are, they are a little bit gone because they try to divide the nucleus from one nucleus to two nucleus. So they are ready for degrade the integrity of nucleus. So in, in that case, interface, the normal cell cycle, while they're compressed, you, you can see the M2 
myosin to activation increase. But mitotic dividing cell, you cannot see any kind of increase of myosin to activation under confined. And nocodazole, nocodazole is uh, here. Nocodazole bind to beta tubulin. So this is tubulin inhibitor and disrupt the tubulin assembly. And then this prevent mitosis by inducing G2M phase arrest. Okay, so they prevent mitosis. So most of the cell, they are induced mitotic cell cycle. So they cannot fully divide it, but they are ready for dividing, but microtubule doesn't exist, so they cannot divide. Nucleus one to two daughter nucleus. So in that case also, you can see many mitotic cell on the mitotic cell, there are little uh, increase of M2 activation, but still severely decreasing to the interface normal cell cycle. So we can say that uh, nuclear integrity, which is fully maintained in interface, they are key for inducing M2 activation, I mean, myosin 2 activation. But when cells are under mitotic phase, they are losing the sense, the force, under this confinement. Here, this is a mitotic cell. You can see uh, there are more like, you cannot see any like myosin 2 activation here, but here you can see more red, uh, yellow, and green color, which is macro myosin 2 activation. And nocodazole plus LPA. Actually, nocodazole is we are inducing mitotic cell more, and then LPA is very well known. ROC inhibitor to induce myosin to activation. Even though you inhibit the microtuber assembly, they are under mitotic phase, but you externally add the LPA ROC activator they start to show polarized one, but not all. Some of them, they are still non-polarized state. Some of them, they are polarized. So we, they want to say that this LPA somehow is down signaling, downstream. So my only, actually this integrity, when integrity disappear from the nocodazo, but when LPA from the LPA, the myosin 2 activation is enhanced, the cell migrate. So this is the reason myosin 2 activation is downstream of the nuclear sensing. Okay. And here they track the how the nucleus change over the mitosis. From this is some right before mitosis, one minute. Mitosis start and then they they divided into two daughter nucleus. As you can see, this uh, myosin 2 level, they are going up here, but under confined, so, so seven micrometer, they are losing the myosin 2 level. Here, myosin 2 level, originally like this, but while they are dividing into two cells, they are going down. So along with this figure C through the E, we can say that nuclear integrity is key, but this is the upstream. Nuclear can sense some force from the confine, and then this for confine, they can induce the myosin 2 cortex activation. This is a key for migration. So, confined, nuclear sense the confinement, and then myosin 2 cortex activation enhance, and then migration. This is the fourth step. So here, they want to go deeply. So as you already know, 7 micrometer confined, myosin 2 activation. CPLA inhibitor, as you know from the previous literature, the CFP CPLA, while the nucleus is compressed, CPLA, where are their position? In the nuclear membrane position. But here, they are using inhibitor. When they inhibit the CPLA2, this is gone. And then CPLA to MO, MO is morphy, morpholinos are typically used to block translocation of mRNA 
and to block the splicing of the prey MRI. So they are making certain RNA structure, but this RNA structure, they block the translation of mRNA, target mRNA. So here, they target CPLA. So when they treat CPLA MO, the CPLA doesn't work 100%. So that is why this myosin 2 activation decreases. Under this condition, when they add more CPLA mRNA from the externally, they recover. So which is, GPLA is very key player for inducing myosin 2 activation. So now, nuclear sense, nuclear sense, and then myosin 2 activation. In the between, what is that? CPLA in the nuclear membrane integrity is, is important in the between. Nuclear sensing to myosin 2 level. So here, this is their imaging. Suspension, no M2 activation, machine activation. CPLA inhibited, also gone, okay. Compressed, enhance, in increase. On the inhibitor CPLA, they are gone. So MO, CPLA mRNA destruction, they are gone. On destruction, they actually added CPLA mRNA to the enhance. So machine 2 can be directed by the CPLA2 in, in a, nuclear, mem in a nu nuclear membrane integrity. So when they check the amoeboid migration cell, 60% CPLA inhibitor, they are gone. Uh, under CPLA inhibitor, when they add LPA, as I told you, myosin 2 activator, they are enhanced. So still, this uh, myosin 2 is a key player for increasing the migration downstream. So from this analysis, they always want to say which is upstream, which is downstream. CPLA upstream, and then myosin 2 is downstream. Okay, so now they want to look at more detail, the CPLA. So M under the MO, the CPLA is mRNA disrupted, disrupted. And then they add externally RNA from the outside. And then LB, LB is, what is that? Le leptomyosin B is nuclear export inhibitor. So here, the RNA is special RNA. What is that? This is CPLA NES, JFP. NES is, they are easily binding to the nuclear inner membrane. So they only, they want to say that the CPLA should be positioned inside of the inner nuclear membrane from this mRNA. So special mRNA, they are enhanced the myosin 2 activation. But when they inhibit the export, sometimes this, when this mRNA and the protein, they are made from the outside of the nucleus and then coming back to the nucleus because of NES and then they are and then this, because of this inhibitor nucle nuclear export inhibitor they cannot go outside so all of the mRNA, CPLA, CPLA protein they are deposited inside of the nucleus membrane and then they are fully recover the M2 activation so which is 100% proof of concept study the CPLA should be located inside of a nuclear membrane. Okay? Without this lab B, what happened? Some CPLA they can position from the inner nuclear membrane as well as outer nuclear membrane because this NES they cannot decouple. They always bind the nuclear membrane, but from the binding to the outside to the inside, both of them. They, they can bind both of them. But because of this LB, they only the CPLA can be deposited inside of the nuclear membrane. So this is their quantification. CPLA NES GFP on the left B, they are more positioned here. And they are a little less. And then this M2 activation more enhanced in here. Okay? And then this kind of similar phenomenon, CPLA dependent increase of M2 activation confirmed by the 
progenitor cell from this early embryogenesis and mesoderm, ectoderm, maybe HPF 5 or 6. There is no increase. And then, as you know, the CPLA lowers, CPLA, they can bind to the nuclear membrane, and then they degrade phospholipid membrane of nuclear membrane, and then they make the arachnoid exit. So from the Laman, they detect the arachnoid exit. So suspension cell confined, they are enhanced, but CPLA, they are inhibited by the inhibitor, they are gone. How can detect, how can know that from the Laman imaging, they detect the AA production from this only nuclear membrane from the help of the CPLA. CPLA, the nucleoplasm, they cleave the phospholipid membrane and they are making AA. So Laman score, Laman microscope, they detect the peak from this nuclear membrane and then we can directly know that this AA, not only from the other things, not only other, but only from the, this nuclear membrane. And then this M2 activation is depending on the low rock pathway. So this DN low A is um, F. Dominant negative low A. They uh, genetic interferes. They knock down the low A. They dysfunction the low A and then going down. Y27, low rock pathway inhibitor, as you know. ML7 is MLCK inhibitor. Stout is a general pan kinase inhibitor. So as you know, the myosin activation, they can be from the MLCK, myosin-like kinase. I will show you. Uh, figure 6F. Figure 6F. Mm. Myosin-like kinase chain, kinase. So here, this is some downstream of the myosin activation. One line is from the MLCK. The other line is low rock. So low rock, they are inhibited by the Y. MLCK, they are inhibited by the ML7. And then stout, kinase inhibitor, they block both of them. So there is Y. Here, they want to say only low rock pathway inhibitor, they are important for activation margin 2 from this cell line not ML7, not MLCK pathway. Stout, they can inhibit both of them. So compared to this blue, you can see statistical difference. But here, ML7, no difference. Actually, this is uh, depending on the cell line and cell types. Previous article, they show us different phenomenon. But this cell line, this content, they show like that. And then, they want to generalize this concept. As you know, when cells are injured, the, they, they suffer the hypotonic, hypotonic microenvironment because this is an intact, uh, intact tissue, but when, cell, when tissue are damaged, the cells are exposed to air, and then they feel hypotonic because no much of the water here. So they mimic this hypotonic like injury. So 1x, isotonic, normal. Hypertonic, more, uh, more, more molecular in the outside of the cell. And hyper, hyper, more, hyper, less molecule. Hypertonic, less molecule of the outside of the cell, which is, and, and then the cell can enlarge, the volume is enlarged. The volume is enlarged, and then, actually they want to say that from previous one, they always compress the cell, but here, they enlarge the cell, but depend not from the direction of the force, the how the nucleus feel is very important. They want to say like that. So ISO, hypo, some are hypo, they also detect the M2 activation, myosin 2 activation. So they check the calcium. Here, oh, this, so M myosin activation, oh, is it enough to see the migrating cell more? So to link this kind of phenomenon, suspension and 0.5 hypotonic and the confinement, overall calcium and intranucleus calcium, more of them, they are in severely increased in cell confined. But 0.5 hypotonic, they are also increasing, but not that much, this confinement. So they hypothesize that 
maybe this calcium up to here, they are increased. They need this kind of high amount of calcium inside the cell needed for making more migrating cell behave. So here, they check the stable blood cell, migrating cell, isotonic, low calcium, hypotonic, actually only hypotonic condition, even though m activation is there, not enough to increase the migrating cell. But ionomycin, ionomycin, they release the calcium from the ER of the inside. So they are at an abundance of the calcium, intracellular calcium level. So they externally induce the intracellular calcium increase by ionomycin and then hypotonic. Hypotonic, what happened? Myosin to activation. Ionomycin, they adding the cell have more intracellular calcium level. And then now they can see around 50% of migrating. This is similar to the seven micrometer confinement. Okay? So don't polarize without, don't polarize a polarized. So polarized one, you can see they are more, they are have similar cell behave. And then increase your margin to level. Small or large, they are migrated to large area. So they summarize like here. 2D, 3D. Let's look at the 2D. 2D is without confinement, only isohypotonic. Isotonic, non polarized, non motile. Folded nuclear membrane. Okay? Non polarized, so nuclear position is center. Isotonic minus CPLA inhibitor. Okay, same. Hypotonic, we can see more M myosin 2 activation, right? So they are more green color. And then this nuclear membrane also stretch, but still non motile, non polarized, right? Central area. But after ionomycin, they polarized to this to this edge, but non motile like that. Non motile means they are ready, they are polarized, but they are not migrating that much. But because ion machine, they are high calcium level. In 3D, when they are confined, compressed, they are directly polarized and motile. But CPLA2 is gone. As you know, CPLA2 is their upstream of myosin 2 activation. So myosin 2 is gone. So non polarized, non motile. But still, nuclear membrane is stretched because of the confinement. CPLA is needed for this non-polarized and motile structure. Under hypo hypotonic condition, what happened? Hypotonic condition, this kind of um, little, this is seven, maybe this is 13 micrometer, still non-polarized, non-motile. But when they add ionomycin under this confinement, they are polarized and motile. So they want to decouple polarization is from the ionomycin intercellular calcium level, but motility is from the this confined. They have to drive the cell to migrate. So this is some height under isotonic condition. Confinement height should be less than nuclear size. But when cells are hypotonic condition under injury, when they are exposed to air, even the confinement height is over the nuclear size, but because of hypotonic, their cell body, they are more enlarged than normal. So the confined length can be a little bit increasing than this left condition, isotonic condition. But still, they have more intercellular level, and then also they previously stretched the nuclear membrane, so they are ready for motility. Not from the 7 micrometer confinement, 13 or 15 micrometer confinement. So nuclear stretch and intercellular positioning enable an adaptive cellular response to different types of the physical cell deformation. So not only the confinement, but also the hypotonic condition, also they can modulate this cell migration depending on the nuclear membrane tension. Overall, they want to Summarize like this. In a nuclear membrane unfolding, 
and intracellular calcium levels are key to enable cells to decode isotropic stretch versus cell squeezing in confinement. So here, nuclear, so myosin 2, when the myosin 2 level is enhanced, calcium level is going up, and the nuclear membrane, like that. So this blue one, calcium level, and then the nuclear unfolding, when both of them are enhanced, they are going, their margin to level is enhanced. So, nuclear deformation, high nuclear membrane unfolding, isotropic twirling, isotropic trapping, both of them happen. But only this swelling is not enough because they have low calcium. But here, when they are isotropically deformated, they have high calcium level, and then nuclear localized. And adaptable morphodynamics, they make high contractility, and they induce motile, motile structure, and low contractility, no motile. So here you have to remember how cell feel the external force from the nucleus membrane folding and unfolding plus intracellular calcium level. Both of them are key for determining the migration of the cell. Okay, let's look at uh, supplementary data. Here, how they make the, this confinement. They're using this PDMS compressed mode. Okay, here, while they compress, they are confined like this. This non-polarized blabbing cell, stabbing blabbing polarized cell, migrating cell, depending on cell types. And as you can see, this uh, cortex, myelination to level in the cortex, they are highly enhanced. Blabbing size, not much. Actually, this progenitor cell is very uh, interest, interest cell morphology compared to other cell, right? So they are like this kind of eight number structure. While they are confined, this margin two level is enhanced. And then, but life at GFP, actin level is not much of a change. Maybe suspension 13 micrometer, they are a little bit change, but not that much to the, this margin two activation. This is their quantification, 13, 10, maybe seven. They are similarly, act, actin, actin abundant is similarly you can see. And then relative plebiscite, plebiscite, this is black. Original, original cell morphology, while they're confined, they can have more this kind of blabbing structure, blabbing size enhanced under this confinement. But blabistatin, the myosin to the deactivator, they are decreasing. While they are blabbing, non-polarized, stable blab polarized, they are more migrating. And then cell velocity enhanced. And then this is the back side, front side, they are migrating this way using this retrograde flow of the actin. So while confined, you can see myosin to activation, the release of confinement, 30 seconds later, they are gone. So this is a very dynamic phenomenon. Blebisatin, no change over time. Percentage of the stable cell, you can see more, 70% from the seven micrometer confined. Caspase inhibitor, transcription inhibitor. This is apoptotic deactivator, and then this is any transcription level is involved, no change. So we can say this is only from the physical phenomenon, not from the biochemical gene production level. 2D, 3D confined, suspension, 3D, blastulas, embryonic pronator cell, ectoderm cell from the four or six HPF a mesoderm, a mesoderm, and then coated on fibronectin, all the same. Where they're confined, you can see migrating cell for all of them. This is their quantification. But when they inhibit the CPLA2, they are gone. So CPLA2 induced myosin 2 activation is important for regulating the mi migration. Cell velocity, and then still black, they show like that. And then from the cell in vivo level, it's really happening. So this is low density and high density. And then M2 activation. 
M2 activation, they can detect more in high density area here. And then nuclear aspect ratio, high means they are more squeezed. When they are more squeezed, myosin 2 level is more enhanced. So we can expect this center area, their mild cells are more migrating compared to other edge area cells because of this neighboring cell induced confinement. So not only from the single cell, but also from the in vivo tissue, we can correlate the nuclear induced, nuclear morphology induced the myosin 2 activation. And then this is from the adherent cell, PEG, adherent, PLA, fibronectin, any coating, coating cell also similarly happen. Density doesn't matter, okay? Compress is important. And then the only conventional uh, stretch activated ion channel, PHO, gadolinium, doesn't involve, okay? Actually, this binding is a little bit different from the previous literature. Previous, previous literature, ah, sorry, previous literature here, they said, uh, similarly, gadolinium and doesn't involve that much. But here, ML7 is involved, but in this paper, ML7 doesn't involve. So, okay, similarly, PHO is not involved in this phenomenon. Compressed induced myosin activation. Not, not from the PHO or mechanosensitive ion channel. Especially from the plasma membrane. Okay. So, going up, but not much of a change. And then, still, Yoda is a pH activator. They are activated, right? So, for under the Yoda, under GSMTX, pH1 deactivator, still, Yoda is treated, they are activated. And in that case, Yoda is in that case, also, Martian level, Martian 2 level is, is checked, but Martian 2 level is, doesn't change that much. So they want to confirm this phenomenon is not from the conventionally well-known stretch-induced ion channel, PHO. So they quantify the nucleus volume, nuclear surface. Nuclear volume doesn't change, not easily. Nucleus, total nuclear surface also here doesn't change that much. This is interesting. Previous literature, this literature, they, they check the nuclear surface enhance largely, right? Largely enhance, but volume doesn't change. But this paper, volume doesn't change and surface doesn't change. So we can say, depending on the cell type, this kind of change of nucleus is, is different. And then, from the 3.3 fertilization after 10 hours later, blastula high, blastula sphere, and then start to show major endo ecto, cell size is decreasing over dividing the cell. And the nuclear size is decreasing. Okay, so sometimes this paper they use 4.7 cell or 3.4 cell. And then, this stable black polarite, on the LPA, you can detect. This cone F is, I uh, is cone F. Sorry. Ah, this is nocodazole. This is nocodazole treated one. Nocodazole treated, most of the cell, they are mitosis. So nuclear integrity is gone. So while they're compressed, they cannot show this polarized cell. And then migrating cell. So translocalization of the calcium, ISO, hypo, 7 micrometer, CPLA2 level, like that, control, they're more enhanced. Hypo, enhanced. I, intercellular calcium level is needed. But ISO, they're increasing, but doesn't that doesn't much. So this is their quantification. Now this is how they measure the nuclear elasticity using this tweezers machine. Suspension confined cell, they 
insert some bead, magnetic bead, in the nucleus here, and then they move this bead left and right. While moving left and right, they measure the force against this movement. So this is their morphology. This position is the bead, and then nucleus is D-shaped like that. And they, this is suspended cell and confined. Both of them, we can, from the 5 micrometer movement, 10 seconds around. While they are doing that, they check this reaction of the reaction force from nucleus. Very similarly, 6 or 8 seconds, they are dissipated. This is stress relaxation. They are stress relaxed. And then, their against force is similarly 50. So stress relaxation time, 6 or 4, and against force from the, this movement, similar, but similar. So we can say that the uh, nucleus, while they squeeze, the, their electricity doesn't change that much because only the cell, inner cell membrane, they are stretched. And then they maintain the elasticity, elastic structure. So while they are moving, this is some elasticity, right? Elasticity, and then wh while we can maintain our strain, this is stress relaxation. So this slope doesn't change, stress relaxation time doesn't change, okay? And then this confined, squeezed, uh, squeezed stretch of the nuclear membrane is maintained up, up to one hour. So this is not, this very dynamic also, right after recovery, they are recovered, but when you maintain the compress, they are maintained. So this is this can be used as, as a prolonged sensor to mediate the external force. And then this confinement height under CPA inhibitor, they are gone. We can see. But under CPA inhibitor, LPA is induced, they are going up. So LPA is rock activator, is downstream compared to CPLA, okay? BAPTA AM, intracellular calcium chelator, without calcium, also they are increased. So calcium and CPLA is upstream compared to LPA-induced rock pathway, okay? And then this iso ion is not enough to increase the myosin-2 activation. I can exit the peak here from the what is that? Yeah, from the Raman, increase CPLA, similar. And the low flat, flat is enhanced, they're decreasing. So here, this is a confined, not confined, suspended cell. This is increase of M2, no increasing, in the same set. So they prove continuously. So this control, and then Cypiagarin, gargin, this is ex calcium activator. They are more calcium, they are more enhanced. This is M2. No calcium from the media, they are decreasing. 2 APB, as you know, 2 APB is ER, nucle ER nucleus ISP, ISP3 mediated calcium releaser. When they are treated, APB inhibitor treated. Intercellular calcium level is decreased from the ER structure, so this is gone. Intercellular calcium chelator, they are gone. Under chelator and the CPLA without, they are gone. So we can say that the extracellular calcium is needed, and also intracellular calcium from the ER and nucleus is needed for mediating this kind of empty activation from the confinement. But this is phenomenon is a little bit different from the previous one, right? Previous one still. They use TPFA and 2 APB as a inner nuclear membrane the ER tension related to the calcium leisure. But extracellular level, BAPTA doesn't induce the myosin 2 activation. So here, depending on cell type, extracellular calcium doesn't mean intercellular calcium also needed. But here, extra calcium also needed for this embryonic stem cell activation. The Laman increasing, AA, Ascobexid increasing, hypoaino, CPLA, they are reduced, increase. 
So, Raman score, M2 activation, they are correlated. So, AA is key for myosin 2 activation. Under hypertonic, so left to B, the unfolded can be folded, right? So, nuclear invagination ratio decrease, volume is enhanced. And then outer surface layer, but this is not that much, the confinement. Blabby size also we can increase, but not that much of this 7 micrometer. So, the 7 micrometer, you can see very significant increase of calcium, but hypo is not that much. So, we need hypoinomyosin, intracellular calcium level enhanced. And, but, in a, under enhanced intracellular calcium level, CPL is gone, they are decreasing. Intracellular calcium level is gone by the BAPTA IM, they are decreasing. So, CPLA, intercellular calcium level is important for regulating to M2 activation, myosin 2 activation. Hypoino, migration cell, without calcium from the media, gone. CPLA is gone, gone. CPLA plus intercellular calcium level is gone, gone. Extracellular calcium, intercellular calcium, CPLA, all of them are important for increasing the migration and the M2 activation. This is there, migrating cell, no migrating cell, cell velocity, and then hypoinos, as, as I mentioned, 60 micrometers is enough to induce some migration of the cell because their cell size is more enlarged than normal isotonic. So they are more migrating under hypoinosin calcium. This is uh, iodine 2 activation, and then little confined, they can give motility of the cell. Nuclear calcium intensity, iso hypo doesn't change, but when cells are normalized nuclear contact area, actually here, they what kind of ion channel is involved, they want to say in supplementary. Here, they check the ORI and esteem protein. What is ORI esteem protein? Let's say this is a 30 micrometer, 10 micrometer. Here, you can see many, many dots here, ORI and esteem. All right here, they are positioned in this steam area. Okay, what is the steam and all right? All right, sorry. You speculate that the stromal interaction molecule all right with steam protein located at the ER and all right proteins representing calcium selective plasma membrane calcium channel could be involved in cellular calcium regulation in confined cells. Once again, we speculate that stromal interaction molecule ORI with STM protein located at the ER and ORI proteins representing calcium selective plasma membrane calcium channel could be involved. So this steam protein and ORI, they are involving in the calcium selective plasma membrane calcium channel. So previous article, they only focus on the calcium is needed from the inside of the cell. ER nucleus. But here they said when cells are needed, calcium is needed from the steam ori, which is plasma membrane calcium channel. But this plasma membrane calcium channel, they are stick to the ER structure as well. So ER, plasma membrane, they are combined together somehow. So this ori uh, ion channel they are positioned both of them. So because of that, this team is ORI is ion channel in the plasma membrane here outside. Steam is a ER, nucleus ER protein. So they are co-localized from the outside. So this ORI, when they are more contact by the confined status, because of that, so calcium is intracellularly uptake from the extracellular level. So that is why here this article, extracellular calcium level is also important. So ORI, YFP intensity, they are more enlarged in cell micrometer confined. And then over time, they are migrating like that. They are confined and then machine to activation in ends. Hmm. Back side, front side. As a last, a summary, they, some, they mentioned that in 2D suspension, nucleus is folded. 
still they are ma maintain the elasticity of nucleus. Myosin 2 actin are there, the myosin 2 is not much activated, and calcium is also low. But under 3D confined, elastic component is also maintained. And then ship and then 4D nuclear membrane is on 4D. And CPLA position to the inner nuclear membrane. And then the CPLA2 cleave and degrade the post-polypid of the nuclear membrane and then making arachin exit. Arachin exit, they are activated myosin 2. Myosin 2, broken myosin 2, they start to show the polarized structure of nucleus. And then on the high calcium level, they are making the migration. So isotonic here, low intercellular calcium, ionomycin, high intercellular calcium, but no unfolded of nuclear membrane. And then while they are unfolded by hypotonic, but not enough. Hypotonic plus intercellular calcium level from the ionomycin, they are needed. And then while they are compressed, high confinement or this hypotonic ionomycin, they are compressed by the proper 16 or more larger compressed, they are migrating. This is some polarized and migrating cell behave. Okay. So as a summary, one more time, I mentioned that this paper, while they're squeezed during the embryogenesis, this nucleus unfolded one to be folded, they're stretched. When they're stretched, this red CPLA position to inner nuclear membrane, and then AA is secreted. Secret AA, they activate the myosin 2, and the cortex myosin 2 activation is enhanced. Because of that, they are more start to migrate. Thank you.